it is our first Friday of a brand new month, February. We have presiding commissioner Daryl Skiles in. Made it in, no problem. No problem. No problem. Uh, I would recommend anybody getting out, plan on driving a lot slower, take your time. Uh, but MoDOT's been doing a, a yeoman's job of getting out. I know they've been working all night. The crews, they've got 72 in reasonably good shape. And uh, most of the side highways, they've been knocked off, at least got a pass through. So they're working on those and getting it better. I know H Highway, CC Highway out our way uh, had not been plowed much in, uh, there, last night when I came in. But uh, this morning it has been knocked off at least. So, uh, yep, take your time. And uh, But if you don't have to be out, it's probably better to, to not be out today and give the crews a, a little easier opportunity to get out and get, uh, get these highways and things back in shape. In the same way our road and bridge crews have been out, they've been working. We don't have the night. Uh, you know, our roads are much narrower than the highways, and we don't have the, the lighting. And, the, and even with the lighting, with our narrow roads, it would just be dangerous and be a, uh, a tough deal for us to be trying to do very much night work with our, uh, with our equipment. But the crews have been working from daylight to dark the last few days trying to get, uh, of course, you know, part of the problem the other day was the snow was coming down all day. Okay. And uh, kind of hard to get ahead of it. But uh, the crews have been out working and they're getting the getting the roads knocked off and uh, getting them in good shape. And, you know, and it's going to warm up and so on. So and the crews also, <clears throat> excuse me, the crews are spreading some material aggregate and some sand and salt and so forth on uh, on the roads as well. So uh, they're, they're getting there. They're working on, especially uh, working on these chip and seal roads, trying to get those knocked off. And uh, people may not realize, you know, the chip and seal roads uh, present a little bit of a of a unique challenge in mm -hmm. that we can't really use the road graders you know we got six graders that we can send out and with their wide wide uh mold boards on them we can cut a pretty large swath pretty mm -hmm. fast as they go down but you can't use those on the chip and seal roads because that chip and seal so so thin and light that the the graders it'll just it'll just destroy them so uh it has to be trucks only with the uh the plows with uh skid shoes on them and things and but they're spreading material so uh it gets done it gets there and you know uh it's a challenge we face every year it isn't this isn't anything uh, unique new we got along pretty good all through january right right and, uh, and then february interesting with this storm though it's actually two different storms mm -hmm. one was sleet and kind of freezing rain right. that came to an end and that creates a bit of an extra challenge yeah. when that stuff coming down freezing on the roads right first. and i know you know yeah then we had the snow and then we had the drifting of the snow and that's still going to possibly happen though the winds have died down but it, it could still see a few drifts to get out there across another the road. five six inches of snow with the wind we had we could have had some real oh, yeah. even more serious issues and things right. so we, lucky we didn't get quite as much as they talked about right yeah. but it, it will always uh I always want people to remind, uh, remind people, though, is that the thawing and the refreezing is what creates a lot of problems, especially sure. on county roads. That's right. Because they can get them all plowed off. You'll have the snow on the side of the road, and then the sun hits it, and it, and it melts it, and it trickles down to the road. And the next thing you know, you have a little there's, small area that's just slicker than you know what. For the next few days, several days, there's going to be slick spots where you wouldn't expect slick spots from just that very thing mm -hmm. right there, the freezing. But, uh, but you know, Dent County, we fared pretty good right. uh, again. So, uh, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's February. You know, we got through January without oh, yeah. too much weather. Yeah. Of course, uh, what, uh, Wednesday, I believe it was, I was telling somebody earlier, Wednesday, <clears throat> it was Groundhog Day. And I said, and I told him, I said, you know, I've never, uh, I've never really took much stock in groundhogs being very reliable meteorologist, and uh, <laughs> so for whatever that's worth. But I will tell you though, I was, uh, I was moving some cattle in preparation of this expected weather on Monday afternoon, and you know what? A groundhog went running across the road in front of me, <laughs> and Stan, he was headed south. So, so I, I'm, I, good I'm a bit of a believer now that uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, I believe that maybe that groundhog knew something uh, that was going to be worse than. <laughs> so maybe. you have a Dent County tradition of Groundhog Day. If they run south, we're, we're going to have less right. than six weeks. Of if you see a groundhog headed, <clears throat> well, if you see a groundhog headed south, it's kind of like you know when you hear the geese going over and yeah. they're, and they're headed south. Well, you know then. Uh, 
there's some uh, kind of bad weather headed at you probably. So if you see a groundhog uh, headed south in January, that's a pretty good indication. There's or some, February. There, or February. Or especially there's, on this Groundhog was, this Day. Was, yeah, well, this was Monday, though, the yeah. last day of January, yeah. and I seen a groundhog out, and he was he was motoring, heading, and he was headed south. So uh, I didn't see if he had little sunglasses or a backpack with him, but he was uh, he was certainly moving. So uh, I'll, I'll pay attention to that some more <laughs> here down the road. So for whatever all that's worth, all right. Well, very good on that. Yeah. Well, we do remind everybody, Den County uh, Courthouse, the annex, all the county buildings really are closed today. They are, and that's basically so that we can, uh, first of all, we like to have our sidewalks and everything in good shape, and uh, it's been a challenge. And the, the courts had already, the, the judges had already ordered the courts and staff to, to close up for the day. And uh, so we did go ahead and close uh, again for today for the courthouse and the judicial building annex and it'll give our crews a chance to get the sidewalks in good shape but also give the city a chance to they've done a yeoman's job too working on the streets and they have you know got you know, if you if you go down around the square they got a big pile of snow piled up in the center of the street oh, yeah. so really if uh it'll give them a chance better chance to operate and get some of that stuff all cleared out better without vehicles employees vehicles and so forth right. around the square and uh, to be honest when we uh, on times like this, you know, if this was December, we probably would have been open about every day because people are coming in, trying to pay taxes, and trying to take care of business. This time of year thing, this is an in-between time. Uh, at times when we have been open, uh, we've monitored, and there's been virtually nobody in coming in the buildings for doing anything. And really, it's it's uh, it's it's to the people's credit that they stay off the streets and let the street and the highway sure. crews and everything get get their work done. So, anyways, so we'll be back in business come Monday. Now, I will mention, we did decide here, you know, we've been down to just meeting one day a week for mm -hmm. quite some time since the COVID thing. And that was to try to just lessen traffic, lessen exposure, uh, make it better for when court was trying to have court, uh, have less people uh, intermixing. Congregating. In yeah. Event. So anyway, that's for some time. We had decided here starting February to go back to the two meetings a week, as it has been for years, Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, we would have been meeting yesterday had it not been for the weather and the closing. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that next week, the county commission, we do have commission training next Thursday, Columbia. So we won't be meeting next Thursday, but we do, uh, we will be meeting Monday. And uh, but so our regular schedule, uh, exclusive of holidays now, is we're back to the two days, with Mondays and Thursdays meeting. But then so, the following Monday, you won't be... <laughs> What After is, that what one, that? because holiday? of President's, President's Day. Day holiday, yeah. Okay, all right. And I guess, you know, I don't know, I guess the courthouse will be closed on Friday, uh, what, Friday the, the 12th uh, or 11th uh, or 11th whatever. 11th yeah. for Lincoln's birthday. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a state holiday. So anyway, just wanted to make folks aware of that. But we will be there Monday. And uh, otherwise, though, the crews uh, have been very busy working on uh, trying to get our roads cleared. The road right. graders, the, the, the dump trucks have all been out running with the plows and uh they're getting there met them met them, some of them this morning on my way in as they were headed out so anyway so when, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of work daryl i think hey uh, i think a lot of people don't realize how much you know they don't realize how many roads are in Dan county first off number over one. 600 and some miles yeah, but yeah. then when they when they of, of county uh, road yeah not, right not I mean, highways but having to get out there and get all those roads and then you know you get it one time for the ice and the sleet, yeah. and you had to go back and do it again when the snow hits. Yeah. So. Yep. That's it. It's, it's, a it's been double pretty, whammy there. Been pretty challenging this time, but you know, we'll, we'll do it. I do want to mention sure. though, one right. of the things we did do this past Monday was we did mm -hmm. uh, vote to put the uh, the road and bridge one quarter cent sales tax back on the ballot again here in April. I believe it'll be April fifth, and uh, that is the one quarter cent. It was right. passed in 2015 when we put it on first time. It, we put it on with a sunset, seven year sunset, and so it does sunset this year. It will terminate in October if it isn't reapproved, and uh, mm -hmm. the the. the uh, and we done that back here a few years ago simply because there was no way that the revenues coming in from property tax and cart was beginning to keep up with the cost of, of trying to keep up and maintain our, our county roads. Uh, the cost of doing chip and seal has gone up exponentially over the years. Of course, the cost of oil, cost of went oil. Outside. that's yeah, right, man. and labor, and uh, so there's no way we were we were to the point of having to transfer between two and three hundred thousand dollars a year from general revenue to road and bridge just to keep it afloat, uh, basically, and be able to just try to maintain status quo. Not even talking about trying to do improvement. We have numerous low water bridges, and and we have replaced 
and rebuilt and repaired several of them since the quarter cent sales tax went into place. But it would sunset this year, so we did vote some money to put it back on the ballot. It's not an increase. It would just simply go ahead and maintain the, the current one quarter cent sales tax for designated strictly for road and bridge. Uh, road and bridge improvements and this one would not have a sunset and it, it wouldn't have a sunset right. you know and we we talked about that here's the deal why by if, when we have to put it on the ballot then there is a cost to the county sure. uh, for having to have an election and we have to share in that cost frankly in in you can talk look five years seven years ten years whatever the the, the cost of doing business isn't going down and the need for it won't be any less than what it is now or what it was in 2015. We did put it on then because we thought at least we would have a chance to, to hopefully it. the people see, see, yeah, this is mm -hmm. what we're getting done. And, and we've gotten a lot done. We've uh, we've been able to get in and, and go ahead and, and uh, recoat and get over all of our chip and seal roads and get them improved. We've been able to do a little bit of additional. There was no promise to do additional mm -hmm. chip and seal with it because every time you do do additional chip and seal, then you've incurred an additional five, $6,000 a year expense just for every uh, New road. every every year for every mile that you've done yeah. because you've got to go in and redo this. So we first wanted to get all the existing uh, ship and seal back in, in better shape and good shape. Uh, get in and get some of these low water crossings. We got numerous low water crossings that were in uh, poor repair and uh, old, been there a long time and had to be in it. So we've been working on those. And you know, that's the problem there. That really, the biggest problem we run into there, even, is uh, uh, of course they're expensive to do, but the big problem is the window and the time frame you have to Very do. Very short, two it months. It is. Like it's generally August and September yeah. are your two driest months you can depend on being able to go in and tear out a, a low water crossing because obviously you don't want to do it at a time that there's a good chance that the creek is going to get up and, and wash out all the work you're trying yeah. to do so uh, those are the months where we jump in and try to get that done but we've got quite a bit more that we want to do and need to do and uh, but at any rate but it lets us do that it lets us have some flexibility to do things like the flap project we've done some flap projects mm -hmm. where we got two in the works right now to, uh, to asphalt actually and this is but we're using mostly federal money on that but there still is some state or some county match and uh, in kind match, match sure. and and, uh, and we have to have the ability to to to, to make up whatever the federal part doesn't do but that'll be a uh, that one flat project federal and access program to go ahead and asphalt the county road going down the hill to Tanvat from from where it's paved up on top of the hill uh, also to replace a bridge on Sinkin Creek another bridge down on Sinkin Creek down by Bunker mm -hmm. uh, just and you know those are like the bridge down there that's not a, a, a heavy use but if it's at a time when uh, uh, you know when emergency mm -hmm. services need to get through or what have you it needs to be there yeah. and uh, so we'll, we'll serve a real need and we've got some others of these that we're working on uh for the in the future so anyway so we did vote to put the quarter cent sales tax back on the april 5th ballot coming up I was, so. that was uh and that was something that a little note had been stuck on the wall since it passed yes the sir first time. yes it you did know, remember yep. yeah well that's <laughs> well, right if you yeah. didn't do it you, yep. you have no chance right behind me we've had an eight by ten yeah. note on the yeah. wall road and bridge sales tax in uh, 2022 yeah. Seemed like a long time ago when we passed that yeah. in 15. That, that was kind of a remote, far-off thing to think about, and now here it is. So Time, time goes by very quickly. It does, it Stan. Sure it sure does. does. Back. So anyway. Oh, very good. All right. Well, you uh, attended a CCAM board meeting in Jeff City that uh, you might want to report on. Uh, uh, back I was thinking we missed do we, it. Maybe do we, do, we, do, we, do we, we, well, we didn't really have a lot of time when Ron was here, so yeah. I, I don't know if we really got into that. Yeah. Well, you yeah, mentioned I, you attended it, but I don't think you ever yeah, explained yeah. what, what County happened. Commission Association Missouri Board Meeting. I am. Uh, I was president this past year, and now I still serve on the executive board as past president. And and we do meet periodically. We met January, I believe it was 19th, and uh, uh, just... No, I believe 18th and 19th. I don't remember. Anyway, we did meet, and uh, basically we just meet to go ahead and finish planning this annual training that we have coming okay. up next uh, here next, next week, week. And, uh, and then go over legislative issues and so forth and see what's happening in, in Jeff City. And as, as Ron talked about here, there's a, a lot of different things going, but then there, there's a whole lot of, uh, uh, as usual, but in an election year like this, it seems to be even worse, just kind of a, some of the arguing back and forth and hard to tell what's happening. But at any rate, uh, did did attend that, so was glad to do that. Mm -hmm. Another meeting I attended at Jeff City, though, was uh, the every year Merrimack Regional Planning Commission mm -hmm. has a legislative day, they call it, up at Jeff City. And uh, some of the board members 
from MRPC, of course, which I'm on uh, as as presiding commissioner for the county. We, we go up and uh, we just go in and, and uh, visit with our various legislative uh, reps and senators about what our uh, MRPC priorities are for mm-hmm. legislation. Every year, MRPC goes through a process of identifying different issues re- that are regional type issues, sure. not necessarily so it just their area. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we prioritize those. So we go up to Jeff City and take those priorities up to the legislators. And uh, I was the only, actually, I was only. A county representative that went this year the others ran into problems and couldn't make it so I was I was glad I was able to go so uh, but we got up there and we were able to meet with senators uh, Justin Brown mm-hmm. and Senator Elaine Gannon she represents uh, the district over around uh, Bellevue Valley Arcadia and uh, and up and down I believe maybe Potosi I'm not sure but she's over the area east of us. Got to rep- got to visit with them and then also with state reps Ron Copeland again and Benny Cook Bruce Sassman, Don Mayhew, Jason Chipman, Bill Hardwick, Chris Dinkins, and Mike McGurl. McGurl. Uh, got to visit with all of them one-on-one uh, about what our legislative issues are and things. And, you know, some of our main ones, like, have to do with transportation. And, uh, mm-hmm. and in, in our region-wide, one that every year is one of our main issues is, is wanting to see improvements to Highway 63 between Rolla and Jeff City. We'd love to see four-lane go ahead and get that completely four lane between uh Rollins and Rollins and Westphalia basically right or just south right. of 50, highway 50 uh but short of that there's there's other improvements though that need to be made in the short term at least and so we like to visit with them about that and uh and keep that on the front burner for them as they look at funding and and MoDOT and what's MoDOT going to do and not do and so on. So anyway, got to visit about that. I did get a chance to visit with them as well then about our uh, this Department of Revenue issue that we ran mm-hmm. into, this mistake the Department of Revenue made. That's basically cost the county a little over a million with another million or more uh, coming at us that it's going to cost us, because, again, because of Department of Revenue's mistake. And uh, some of the legislators we're very interested in asking questions about that and, and the point of this discussion right now is how to make sure something like this doesn't happen again in the future yeah. with well, what, what if it happened with, to a county that didn't have reserves like Dan county oh yeah I, yes yes exactly yeah. i've had commissioners tell me as they've heard what happened that they it would it would have just it would have wiped them out they'd have been they'd have been out of business they'd have been not just broke but they'd have been in the hole and yeah. i said you know a couple of different commissioner said we'd have just had to hand department of revenue the keys to the courthouse and there you go it's yours now we're done because you, you know some count ca- some some i've had some counties tell me they were very tickled at the end of the year and they had a little little over a hundred thousand dollars left in in general revenue reserves in total and uh oh. you know <laughs> yeah and you know we ended the year with about 1.8 1.9 million in reserves now you know and people say well why are you sitting on that much you know that's an you know, if we weren't sitting, hadn't been sitting on some, we could not have absorbed a million dollar loss of revenue because of a state Absolutely mistake. Absolutely not. You know, one of the questions I asked the representatives, all of them, when we were up there, what would the state of Missouri say and do if all of a sudden they found out in February, oh, the federal government had made a terrible mistake and for the next three months the state would get no revenue? None. The silence you're hearing mm-hmm. right now, it's exactly... Uh, it was wide-eyed mm-hmm. and not a sound from all the reps that were sitting there as I asked. I said, what would the state do? What would the state's response be if you found out the federal government had made a mistake and you were getting no revenue for three months? State can't do that. State couldn't do They couldn't. They couldn't, couldn't function. Couldn't do that. Yeah. I said, but that's the position that the state put us in yeah. because they made a mistake. Well, now, exactly. Now, luckily— we were sitting on some reserves that we were able to, to work around and, and get around it now. So— Anyway, that's where we're at, and I just want them to, to think about it from that context, why they need to do something about this. You know, and we've talked about this. If we make a mistake, we have errors in emissions, liability insurance. If we make a mistake, absolute terrible mistake, Stan, that cost you, we have errors in emissions insurance to cover us liability-wise. But evidently, the state doesn't uh, doesn't fall in that deal. Because they don't make don't, errors, Daryl. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's just another question we have about why. You know, there's got to be something in this deal. You've got to have some protection in this. You just can't have uh, – and it's just – and I said, you know, whatever 
whatever has happened has happened already. I, I'm not telling them all this because I want to jump in and get something to rescue us from this deal because this deal's already, it's already there. It's, it's going to be what it is going to be, I guess. But they've got to look at what can, what can be done to, to really look deeply at this problem and make sure something like this doesn't happen again to somebody. Being able to go back two or three years, uh, you know, if you've t gotten revenue that shouldn't have, well, you know, I guess, okay, I don't know, look at that. But to be able to go back and, and, uh, and drag back 10 years of revenue for, uh, from you, well, that's, uh, and if it's, a from a, and if it's from a, by a large entity, mm -hmm. that's, that's devastating, and, oh, yeah. as some of these counties have said. And that's why, you know, I've gotten phone calls from uh, state reps up in North Missouri and state senators that are uh, sitting in, in on powerful committees and things here in the state that have called because as I've told this to around the state other uh, to other commissioners they've shared with their reps that hey you need to look at this this our county couldn't handle this if this happened so I've had I've gotten some calls from some reps and senators asking what were the details and and how did this happen and go down and and so they've been talking to Department of Revenue too so and I know uh, you know according to our attorney Department of Revenue is is working on it as hard as they can I mean they're bound by the statute they're just trying to work within the bounds of what it had we just would have appreciated a heads up, though. Yeah, no, they yeah they weren't bound by the statute to keep it a secret from yeah, us. Well, you can't no, tell me and that. They were not, and I don't think so, it gave them permission just to take without notice take your t sales taxes away. Well, yeah, I well, don't think that was in the state statute uh, either. Yeah, well, there's a lot of question about some of that, but at any rate, yeah. we're working through that, and I think we'll have this brought to a resolution here in just a, a, a few months. In the meantime, we had to adopt a budget. Yeah, put together a budget, you know, and then and you know when you're putting together a budget, you're trying to put together a budget of of uh, of how you're going to allocate all the pieces of the pie. And our only challenge in this is we had no no clue really what the pie looks like, mm -hmm. you know, with this Department of Revenue thing. Now, uh, we feel like we have a pretty good idea what maybe the maximum is going to be that they're going to do, so we could work around that. Probably the only saving grace in all this is this uh, this thing called ARPA, America Rescue Plan Act, monies that are that have come in and they're mm -hmm. sitting there, and they have uh, loosened the, the U.S. Treasury's loosened restrictions on that to where those monies can be used for. They made it simple. They simplified being able to use it to replace lost revenue, right. which absolutely falls into what we're talking about here, and uh, or just simply general county services they call it general revenue road and bridge stuff we can use it for what now the details of that are still got to be fleshed out and we're going to be uh having a regional meeting i think with uh, travis elliott the missouri association mm -hmm. county's attorney here later this uh this month to as he's had a chance to, you know it's 400 pages his latest revision of what you can or can't do for sure Good night, and what it, and <laughs> what it says on the thumbnail that you read at first oh great that's easy well then wait a minute then you get a little deeper well no it ain't quite as easy as the as the thumbnail look up at it appears to be so you have to go back and look a little deeper and the fine and print sure. Darryl. right yeah look at print. it all so anyway but but it is there that we're going to be able to uh, we know that we're going to be able to use some of that so we adopted a budget and uh, we got a, it was a good budget we did end the year in good shape in spite of of the of the stuff that happened we did use some uh, some arpa money to backfill from some of the losses from last year uh that we were allowed to do so uh, we did end the year though in good shape we did approve a new budget uh, and really, I don't think, folks, if you look at this budget compared to the past year's budget, you probably there's not probably much that will jump out at you. I can tell you it does include a 4% COLA. There was talk, uh, uh, some folks uh, beating the drum that we needed to put in place a 5 or 6% COLA. I heard one county, uh, and I won't throw anybody under the bus, but I heard one county put in place a 12% COLA. That was a, that was astounding, and and I heard another one was looking at going to put in a ten percent cola across the board, and uh, they didn't know how they were going to be able to afford it, but they were going to do it anyway. And I thought, holy well, mackerel! Wait a minute, you 10? don't know how you're going to afford it. How can you? Yes, get that's ex it? listen. That's exactly what I was told. Yeah. I got, that that was wow. unbelievable, but um, some and but one county in particular said they did they approved their budget and they put in place a twelve percent across the board cola cost of living allowance increase so anyways we our budget did include a four percent cola now it did include though some adjustments on the base base uh, skip base pay rates mm -hmm. to get some of the base rates up because we had fallen behind you know across across the country and you go everywhere uh what people can start at and and make is, has gone up so we did do some adjustment on the base rates and uh and salary schedules and then, but it did include a 4% COLA. Probably one of the biggest things that I would point out somebody of interest 
uh, in the budget would be that we did include uh, about $800,000 mm -hmm. in uh, under capital expense and mm -hmm. general revenue to help cover some work that we're going to do on the old courthouse. We needed a, work. We got Much a lot of exterior work. work that we need to do. We've got a, a, a base, a, an outline, a plan in place for all these different things that we want to do. Uh, we want to put a new set of bathrooms in the uh, the courthouse for public bathroom use and uh, a lot of just different things like that so we did include that in there and it's still in the year with a good balance left we're not we're not going to break ourselves or right. take it to zero so anyway so with that and that was actually planned for 2020 before covid took yeah, all some of it was yeah. and but at the time even i think we were putting 300 350 thousand maybe 400 thousand we went ahead then part of that money we spent on a on an engineering study architect engineering study to come and actually for some guys to get up on a lift and go completely around the building mm -hmm. get on top of the building you know uh, you, we don't get up on top of the building much we needed them to get up there and look everything from the cupola all the way up up on top right. all the way down come up with a plan and a lot of the work they pointed out was there was more work than what we'd even uh, expected and so uh, we upped that thing up to about eight hundred thousand and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to work on the old building and but it was gonna be done <laughs> in stages anyway yes you know, it that, was and that was yeah, the, that's true. the first stage and yeah and you know you replaced the windows the year before yep, a few you know years ago the bottom right? the bottom floor the first bottom floor. floor and then i think the third floor was the next one you did the you top know? the top, top floor. ones up there the, okay so well, anyway. we ran into a deal there those round windows up on the very top up that you see up there people mm -hmm. probably didn't realize those things were they were coming apart i mean just literally coming apart and we had water coming in and it was it was dreadful so if we didn't do anything else we had to get those either either replaced and we got a really we got a really good deal from our local supplier on just the windows that would just pop right in there and seal that up mm -hmm. they're looking at trying to completely redo them dormers though because the dormers themselves even where them things sit in and all of that you know it's it, that whole thing is th those whole th deals are are were kind of a mess yeah. and so we got to get those whole things redone and yeah we did get those round windows redone a few years ago we got all the bottom floor windows done now we need to get in and, and really get the dormers redone. The dormers, the dormers in a complete package may actually go in, in place there to redo those whole things. Uh, but we're going to get, we need to get new windows. Just it, the old girl, the old courthouse just needs a, uh, needs some TLC. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. But, but you, you had know, looked at, at getting a grant for some of that money, but there was just too many strings tied to it. Yes, like you said, you wanted to add bathrooms to that courthouse. You couldn't touch it you, because yeah, what they, if you would have signed on, you'd had to leave it as a historical monument and not make those kind of improvements. Yeah. Correct. Well, the, yeah, yeah. I tell you, there's there's yes a little bit no, of maybe. yeah, yes and no. There's some misinformation uh -huh. about that. People say, oh, well, you can't do that because it's a historical building. And and I checked into that, and they said, well, no, yeah, you can. Here was the deal, though. If we took this money though for historical to redo the windows, and we took the money for that, we couldn't do anything without the Department of Natural Resources mm -hmm. approval first, going through them and get approval. And then there would be things though that if you did do it, then it had to be done in accordance with. Uh, historical preservation guidelines and some things. So, so it just it just complicated the issue to where it said, forget it. We'll replace the windows ourselves. Uh, we're not gonna. I'm not. We're not gonna have you hanging this. This was going to be like 15 years. Is is easement you'd be under that with Department of Revenue and or Department of Natural Resources. If you had to do it by historical preservation rules, a lot of that yep. is much more costly. Uh huh. Oh yeah, it was going to double the, the wind. Just the bottom floor with window thing was going to like double the cost of what it would have been. Uh, to meet their guidelines and uh, you know uh, no and they weren't gonna they weren't gonna supply enough money through their grant no, deal no, to make no. it worthwhile doing this besides being tied to them for 15 years or yeah. so what you could do so anyway anyway we got the budget approved got bills paid and uh, moving on <laughs> just that back simple in, back just, in business no, well, and you, gotta, you know and the important part is you got the bills paid nobody can yes, get sir. paid until that budget didn't get approved no yeah no so, bills can be paid until we approve so the budget there were we quite a the few budget. bills paid there after it's after quite that. a stack by the yeah. end of january you know right. we generally approve bills every every week we try to catch up on the bills we like to keep our all of our suppliers caught up and paid up and uh, so when you can't do it for a month then it, you can imagine it stacks up so we got that done and uh, and back in regular business. So I'm not sure the last time we got together because Ron was here, and I know you <laughs> mm -hmm. and Ron and Benny Cook and, and others had gone to Montauk State Park. You're worried about you know the the, the ARPA money the uh -huh. state has and attributing some of that money 
to the things that need to be done at, at Montauk. Current River State Park is beautiful, and they're working on that, and they put a lot of money into what they're going to do there. Echo Bluff is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, they got that lodge down there at Current River State Park. They've, they've committed like $5.3 million to redoing that whole lodge and opening it up, which is great. But Montauk is still sitting here, and it's been promised expansion. It's been mm-hmm. promised things, and Daryl, the funding just seems to go away either because of a flood or this or that. And uh, I think one year the money was earmarked for Montauk. I moved to Echo Bluff. Yeah. So uh, I think just making those legislators aware that this is a viable entity that can, that really draws still a ton of people to oh, this yes, area. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, I believe it's the leading state park in the whole system for camping, yeah. for campers uh, every year. And the lodge, and it could, be, it could be even much more. They need to finish, and I think they do have plans this year to go ahead with what they call the Loop 5 for camping. But the old lodge, if you get down there, and we did, we, uh, and I, we did talk about this a little bit on the last time, but we did, uh, Wes Mulberry and I did meet with Ron Copeland and Benny Cook and the, uh, uh, the new park superintendent, Kalen Dalbum. And, uh, and, and Wes and I went down there because we're looking at, you know, we're doing this. We talked about this flat project coming down to Tanvat, just downriver from the park. There's a possibility. I think Wes is going ahead and applying for a, a flat, another flat project to go ahead and extend that paved asphalt road oh, on from Tanvat to come up to the back of Montauk Park up the county road. Needs it. But it needs it. It does need it. But our question and issue was is the is the park committed to making some improvements and and you, because you know it's going to come along the bluff road and so you know if we're going to do this then we'd like to see the, see the state you know be committed to making some improvement and, and montauk just hasn't gotten its share of money that it should be getting to for for what it contributes and what it could contribute it could, if they could uh, you know they need a new lodge down there bad with the better uh, motel type rooms and mm-hmm. along with the improvements to the cabins and so on and uh, if they could build a lodge that included some conference rooms and things we could easily have we would have people that would come there for conferences and Absolutely. things. Absolutely. You know, our county commission association meeting uh, this last year was held down at Echo Bluff. It has some nice meeting rooms and is very accommodating for that. Great motel type mm-hmm. accommodations and so on and, and able to, and then uh, things. But Montauk would, would, would serve that and, and there'd be people that would come there because for the in-between times, there's there's actual fishing there right there within the mm-hmm. park. And there's the, the hatcheries and there's all the various well, the things. trails. Yep, and the trails. So there's all kinds of things Montauk offers. And it's just been, you know, if you get a, really walk around the lodge, I mean, they've done some renovation the last couple of years, but it's very cosmetic. And the old building is, you know, it just needs a lot of work, very badly needs a lot of work. And what it really needs is a new bigger uh, better lodge and it just needs a commitment from state so we just wanted to meet down there with uh, representative copeland and representative cook from texas county because it's a, it's an economic driver for texas county they're a lot both, of people come yeah, and stay counties. there and come on over then and stuff so uh, and they're aware of that and ron's uh, very much on that and hoping to try to see what can be done to help get additional funding for montauk a lot of people work there uh and the sales tax if you're talking when you're talking about sales tax and revenue uh montauk's a, a major part of the economic engine that, yeah, where things rotate is. around it's come march 1st and that's just coming up around the corner now trout season opens uh things will be hopping and buzzing down there there was a loyalty uh survey done that i i came across and i, I and this is a few months back mm-hmm. with state parks when everybody's going to state parks you know because of of covid mm-hmm. you can go to state parks and that year that everybody was trapped inside for march and april as soon as yeah. basically you could get out there heading out to every state park imaginable the loyalty factor for people who return to the state parks that mm-hmm. they most like montauk was yeah. number uh, one i can imagine you I know can. and so and whether they stayed there all day or not uh-huh. they still went back to montauk yep and that's not just den county people that's Statewide, Montauk was number one. Yep. I have some commission, a commissioner friend over at Cape Girardeau County who comes over here with uh, his family and half a dozen of his friends from over there, and they just uh, they make the trip at least twice and usually three times a year to come over. Usually, as a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago they were here, and I, uh, they were leaving, and I came in town and uh, ate breakfast with them as they were headed back. Uh, but they uh, oh, they come over in January just for the catch and release, but they come over, they're fly fishermen, and they and for them, Montauk is it. It's it's like heaven on earth to mm-hmm. get down here. And, and, and But they even talked about how much, and I mentioned it to them, that we were talking to our reps about 
some money needs to be allocated. And so uh, my commissioner friend from over there said he would he would beat that drum with his rep and senator too. That hey, when you're when you're working allocating money to DNR, uh, Montauk over there mm -hmm. needs some 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 money for improvement. So, so we'll 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 keep working on that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, we yeah. appreciate Montauk and love it. It's beautiful. Just 14 miles straight south of me, yeah. from from my house. I, and the neat thing is, I don't think a lot of people realize either, is a lot of the like St. Louis Cardinals and the sports figures up in St. Mm -hmm. Louis. This is closer to where they came from. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are from smaller towns, and, and um, I can honestly tell you that I know that used to be the <laughs> radio and TV uh, person in charge. She comes to Den County through either Montauk or Echo Bluff State Park five times a year. Wow. She Good. brings with her other people from the front office, and uh -huh. now all those people come down here, not just the same time. They come down there on their own. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, Ann, I said, I know I introduced you to Montauk State Park back in the 90s. She goes, I'm so glad you did because her husband and they bought a camper. They come mm -hmm. down. They used to go to Montauk three times a year. Now they go to Echo Bluff yeah. three times and go to Montauk twice. And I said, uh, and I, she's just, she's goes. I bring people with me. We have our friends come out and meet us there. So she goes. So yeah. I'm helping you spread the good word. And I said, well, I appreciate that. I said, our county appreciates that. And everybody does. But that's what it takes. Once people get there, they fall in love with it and they right. want to come back. And you know, we can spend some money and we can we can build a bigger lodge and do some things without spoiling why it's so great and attractive to people for people to come to anyway i think really they can do some things to just enhance its use and uh and uh, make it even even better mm -hmm. and uh, so i agree so anyway yeah. right, so i so want to let so people know that that is something that happened and go in a little bit more detail because i know we didn't have a lot of time last yeah. week now i'll tell you another interesting meeting since we're talking okay. about you meetings right and things ahead. was uh this uh a couple here a week or so ago a little over a week ago attended a meeting with congressman jason smith mm -hmm. he was uh, able to come home for a day <laughs> And uh, uh, we uh, were in invited to come out to a meeting that he uh, had with the Royal Oak representatives. I'm going to have to get me a drink here. That's all right. <coughs> anyway, Royal Oak is uh, in the middle of a $40 million expansion. And uh, when we heard the story from those folks about how they went about this, they were looking at three different uh, towns, places, you know, they've got several different mm -hmm. uh, uh, places here in, in Missouri yeah, operations uh, creating, uh, doing what they do, and that's mm -hmm. uh, making charcoal. And this is the charcoal capital of the United States right here where we're at, and ours is the biggest right here at Salem. Right. And, uh, but they were looking to expand their operation uh, pretty, pretty tremendously. And so they looked at th uh, three places and finally settled on Salem was where they wanted to do that. And so that's what they're doing right now in the middle of doing a $40 million expansion. And uh, and it, it's just incredible to hear, you know, that you're talking about at any given time, 80 to 90 trucks a day leaving out of there with product. And so that factors into, as we were talking about, uh, you know, what can we do? What can I do even on the county side working with the Transportation Advisory Committee to see that we have the good transportation infrastructure in place to accommodate their needs? Sure. The bulk of those trucks are going are heading up towards Rolla to get to the interstate mm -hmm. or to Highway 63 and go north. You know, that factors into, you know, what can we do to enhance access to I-44 from coming from the Salem direction, which is a, a constant a battle, battle that we have, battle, with them, you know. So at any rate, but it was very interesting to see firsthand. You know, they're one of the largest employers here in the county, and uh, they pay good wages and benefits. I think they employ somewhere approximately 170 at, at full force right now, and, uh, this and that's is, just going to get bigger. Yeah, probably going to probably will. So you know, it's, it's a major commitment on their part, and uh, the folks that own Royal Oak. And uh, it was a it was a great uh, it was a great afternoon, and really appreciated the invite invite to uh, sit in on that and participate in that tour as we went through seeing uh, just a little bit of how the process is of making the charcoal and and getting it out, and then what they're doing in their expansion. So anyway, just wanted to mention that charcoal well, plant's been there a <clears throat> long time, Daryl. It was here when I came, and I know it's been here for many years before that. So going back to the Floyds, yeah. So. Ivan and Leon, and yeah. And matter of fact, you know, it, it, old habits are hard to break. Uh, when uh, 
the commission when we left on Monday, we were going to go out there and meet so those guys. And, the and I made so made the comment, something said, "Well, I'll see you, you know, see you guys before I'll see you out at Floyd's Charcoal." Like, <laughs> right there and, Wait a minute, no. It's been a lot of been named by called by a lot of things since then, but it's still uh, for those of us who grew up here, it's still Floyd's Charcoal. <clears throat> so anyway. Very good. That was yeah. an interesting, interesting meeting, uh, though. I was going to say. Uh, that really, to, really proud to have the folks out there. Had to be, Ro- had Royal to be very good. All right. Uh, <coughs> what else would you like to talk about? Well, I tell you, I think that pretty well catches me up. Uh, I'm looking at my notes. Nope, I think that pretty well catches uh, me up, Stan. So on Monday, we'll probably we'll hear from Sally, <coughs> I would assume. She Economic her Development report, Director right? will be in Monday. Yeah. We'll get so back we to some. So we'll remind people about... Uh, um, she does she does a great job, and she's still working on a number of different things. And if you have any questions about economic development or about your business or about needing uh-huh. some help, please call Sally. Yes. She does a tremendous job. And you can just call her at City Hall, 729-4811, and just ask for her. That's not her direct <coughs> number, but that will get you to her. And and uh, she can help you. She At least if she doesn't have the answer, she can give you a name or a number for you to call to find out more. That's what she's working on all the time, to try yeah. to help businesses locate or try to help existing businesses stay in business or expand or whatever. Doing a great, great job and look forward to seeing her Monday. Yeah. So mm. I believe that catches us, uh, kind of catches us up, Stan. Very good. I want to remind people to drive safely. Yes, sir. The roads, are, some of the roads out there are still very precarious. I won't say... Hazardous, but I'll say precarious. Uh, well, if you'd have to stop suddenly, most, and, and of, most of the highways and streets, it isn't going to happen. Yeah. So think about yeah. that. And so we uh, we hope everybody has a good weekend. And um, next time we come together, it'll be after Valentine's Day. So I guess we should wish them a happy Valentine's Day, too. Yeah, that's right. It will be, what, the 18th? The uh, 18th, yeah. Valentine's Day is on the 14th. So don't forget that. Yeah, don't forget that. It can get you in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> <laughs> yep, we'll be meeting this Monday, and then you'll be off on the eleventh or, or the tenth, uh, right? You'll be off on the tenth. We'll be gone. Yeah, we'll be gone yeah. the tenth to training. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, we'll be meeting the fourteenth and the seventeenth, and yep. then the following Mondays close for President's Day. Close so President's we'll be meeting on Valentine's Day. You will, but we won't be here on Valentine's. No, Day. So no, we'll be we'll, talking about Valentine's Day that Friday. We'll be of that next week. time we're on the radio here. will be on February eighteenth. Uh, we do want to thank Ron Copeland for coming in last week and uh-huh. uh, giving us a lot of inside detail about what's going on in, in the redistricting, and they're still kind of battling it out. But it looks like they're coming to a consensus. So yep, they'll get it ironed out pretty uh, soon. Still a couple people unhappy about it. Filing for offices, state and county offices, yeah. begins February 22nd. So and they should have everything, I would say, done by next week the way it looks. But they haven't been in session here for the last couple of days. Right. They didn't help any. No. They they pretty well bailed out and headed home Tuesday night, I think. Yeah, I can't really blame them. Yeah. No, I don't yeah, either. Yeah, so really blame them. All right. anyway. Well, Daryl, I want to thank you very much. Daryl <laughs> does pay for this program out of his own pocket. There are no county dollars that are associated with this. There are no tax dollars associated with this. And so we do thank Daryl for doing this, and he's been doing this since he got in office, and that's been a few years back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I actually think we started it uh, either later in 2007. I went in office January 2007, and I think we started it either later that year that or January 2008. But I'll have to go back and say, I'll have to dig that up sometime. You got my curiosity up now. Yeah, but anyway. I think it was that spring because yeah. you had asked when we were doing our mayors at that time, and you asked if you could Talked do a program that. like that. Yeah, yeah. So I do appreciate the opportunity, Stan. I hope folks uh, maybe heard a little more detail and learned some information that's of interest to them. And uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks. And until then, I do hope everyone will be safe, Mm -hmm. happy, healthy, and God bless each and every 